a few weeks ago, I was talking to Katz and then I realized that, oh, wow, she's, um, she's actually um, helping out in the center. Um, that is uh, really pro yeah, providing a lot of help for the Ukrainian refugees uh, currently stuck in the, the Polish side of the border. Um, so actually, without further ado, actually, I'd like to invite Katz um, to give the site uh, about how Poland is actually helping uh, the Ukrainians uh, who are fleeing from the war. Uh, Katz, over to you. So um, I'm currently at the center, uh, at the refugee center in Krakow, actually. But um, I wanted to just start by saying that um, over two million uh, Ukrainians, two million Ukrainian refugees have actually left the country and come to Poland because many of them have relatives here who work here. Many of them also leave because it's a, you know, a, a border that is close to, you know, that it, we're sharing a border with them. So that's why I, they, they moved here and uh, they actually, they are right now in a lot of big cities in Poland, but they are also like, you know, po Polish people, I must say that they have um, actually uh, started, you know, acting from the very first day that the war started. So Polish people were traveling to the border where they, um, where they offered their cars and offered free transportation. They brought food, they brought uh, clothes. They were basically waiting, you know, with a hot tea and sandwiches for everybody, every person that is, um, uh, that is, sorry. <laughs> Actually, I thought I, w I, I thought that it w won't be that much, uh, you know, emotional about this topic anymore. But uh, they were waiting, you know, with a, uh, with food for the people that are crossing the border. And now most of the all of the big cities in Poland are actually they have um, they set up some some type of uh, center for the refugees so that they could. Um, you know, get some um, basic basic products, get clothes, get food. Um, a lot of Polish people actually are offering their homes and their apartments for the refugees. So they are even even if they live there, they have a room or two rooms. They offer um, offer it to 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 people. And I'm actually at the at the center where I'm normally volunteering. One second, let me just switch the camera angle so right now you're um, live you're live in uh, krakow uh, i am in, uh, in the center I am. okay for some reason i cannot change the angle let me see okay here it is ah, yes. all right so this is the this is the one of the one of the centers it's called multicultural, multicultural center in krakow and they have set up a few points where people can get uh for example clothes or like uh, sanitary products and things like that. So now at the moment, what you can see is the queue of people queuing to get their, you know, basic, uh, basic things. I'm going to go into the center. I actually cleared this out with volunteers today so that they know that I'm not a, uh, you know, some crazy person. So yeah, this is, as you can see here, um, you know, this is, this looks quite professional. Believe me, I was here two weeks ago and all of these cupboards over here were not here. So basically here, people can, you know, take everything like from uh, shampoos, cosmetics, sanitary products, things for their pets, also things for babies like formula, uh, dry food, everything they can come in. Um, and register and just uh, just basically take whatever they need. So yeah, that's that's how it looks like. These are these are the volunteers who are registering the people that are coming in. And yeah, that's that's pretty much how it how it is. I'm going to go out because there's a lot of people here and we're still kind of under you know COVID uh, requirements. So uh, you know, so there are people who are managing the crowd and making sure that not um, all of the people come in uh, but yeah that's that's pretty much how it how it is and um, there are I must say that there are some really beautiful situations you know happening like uh, for example uh, there was a photo
taken uh, in um, Przemysl in one of the Poland cities uh, at the train station with empty strollers for babies. And the mothers just came in, left the strollers over there and uh, ready for, for Ukrainian refugees to pick them up when they arrive in, on the train station. So I actually, I think that a lot of Polish people were, you know, they, they stood up to, uh, to, um, to the situation and basically, you know, just uh, couldn't sit still basically. So everybody wants to chip in and everybody wants to help in any way they can, whether it's donating money or whether it's just, you know, sharing their house or their car or uh, or you know some some things or or just you know being a volunteer in the center like 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 this one so so yeah this is this is how how the situation looks like in Poland and and so slowly it is getting um it is getting you know um i would say taken over by the the government and the the city um because obviously obviously it has to but for the uh, first two weeks, I think it was just volunteers, regular people like me, you, you know, just uh, going out and, and helping. So, uh, so Kat, are you, um, is it um, true that, uh, for example, the center that you are at right now, it's kind of privately run by just Polish people who, who, who with a heart? Yeah, it is. It is. That's, that's true. We, um, this is run by a, a NGO. Uh, actually, uh, with a cooperation from a non-government organization, but most of the all of the volunteers that are here are, you know, just regular people who have regular jobs or go to school or they are at the university. Uh, there are sometimes high school students that come in and you know help sort things. All of the things that are in the uh, in the center that the refugees can get help, they are they were all donated by you know regular people mm. from all over the world, not only from uh, from from Poland, but I guess that we received also some donations from Germany or from uh, Scandinavian countries. So, yeah, mm. but two million is also a crazy number. So it's like never ending work, and even just yeah. imagine finding accommodation for two million people. That is that is crazy. Maybe yes. my, my uh, one uh, well, two one question would be: uh, We saw this uh, photo that you have prepared as well mm -hmm. uh, about um, the uh, shopping mall. Um, maybe can yeah. you just very briefly say tell us like what is this? Uh, sure. Do with the situation. So this is uh, this is also an this was an old shopping mall in Krakow that wasn't working anymore. It was shut down, and um, during this month. Um, some people came, uh, also uh, some companies uh, volunteered and uh, they actually renovated it a little bit and changed it into a, let's say a shopping mall again, basically, because you can go there and take clothes. This is ex only for the refugees. So it looks actually like a shopping mall where you have, you know, um, uh, where you can roam freely, just browse through clothes, and you have changing rooms. You know, it's it is exactly like the the shopping mall, but all the clothes clothes are for free for the refugees to take. So whatever they need, if it's clothes for them or for their children, they can just freely come in and and take whatever they want, basically. Totally free shopping mall. That's crazy. Right? Like yeah. a repurpose and everything. Yeah. Just oh, okay. Oh, awesome.